Um, I'd like to start today by uh, giving the team an opportunity to introduce themselves, and then I'll jump in with my introduction, and then we'll go right into the narrative. Um, we are Relooped. Um, my name is Rebecca Pitchin. I'm Dylan Wallace. I'm Cynthia Eid. I'm Alex Bremler. Thank you, Team Reloop. Looking forward to the presentation today. Um, my name is Rob Beamer. I serve as the uh, Director of Executive Programs at Loyola Marymount University's College of Business Administration. In that role, I oversee the Executive MBA program and the corporate uh, classes that we offer to our executive education partners. Um, I have a background in finance, uh, financial planning particularly, and also theology, interestingly enough. Um, but that's another story for another day. Excited today to have a chance to hear your 10 minute presentation. So without further ado, I will read the instructions. You have been called back by the company you gave your full presentation to for a second visit. They have asked you to speak only about the ethical aspects of the problem and to explain why your solution successfully handles any ethical issues. You will have 10 minutes. There will be no question and answer after the presentation. You may not use slides or video. You probably don't want to have more than two or three members of your team doing the presenting. Good luck. I will turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Um, as I said before, we are Relooped, and we are here to propose the following ethical implications to you the executive board of Loop US and their parent company, TerraCycle, regarding the continued use of single-use packaging. Single-use packaging has an extremely large environmental footprint. The environmental impact of the materials used to produce the packaging varies. However, ethically, all single-use packaging is wasteful and should be prevented at all costs. According to the EPA, Containers and packaging contribute 82.2 million tons of municipal solid waste generated in the United States. A million plastic bottles are bought around the world every minute, and that number is protected to grow without the widespread implementation of reusable packaging programs, such as that of what we are urging your executive board to continue to expand. Furthermore, single-use plastics have been linked to causing a variety of environmental issues. Single-use plastics are made from fossil fuels and their production has an incredibly impactful carbon footprint. Only a fraction of plastic is actually recycled. The EPA has estimated that just 8.7% of the plastic that was discarded in the US in 2018 was recycled. Where is this plastic going, you may ask? Well, studies have found that at least 14 million tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year, ethically, Nature is not simply for human use. Our use of single-use plastic packaging has severely impacted marine life, and we ethically do not have the right to continue to do so. Polystyrene foam packaging is a single impact material with no market for recycling. As such, polystyrene foam represents 30% of all landfill space by volume. This type of packaging is frequently used by restaurants, specifically those that offer takeout or carryout options. Your firm should increase their ethical impact by partnering with restaurants to offer reusable packaging options to reduce the waste and environmental degradation caused by foam packaging. A common misconception is that the environmental impact of glass is much lower than alternative packaging options. However, a study has found that glass bottles contributed 95% more to the climate crisis than aluminum cans. As such, your firm should continue to use aluminum as the primary material used in their reusable packaging. With this knowledge, it would be ethically sound to spread the knowledge to others and urge responsible consumption using easy to access platforms such as social media as we discussed in our presentation yesterday. My colleague Cynthia will now discuss the ethical implications of continuing to use gas vehicles to deliver and pick up your firm's reusable packaging. Hello, everyone. So another ethical issue, like Rebecca said, is that we noticed is with the type of vehicles Luke is using, 
A lot of pollution comes from gas trucks that the loop employees drive to the plants to pick up the products that the customers have dropped off. The problem comes because Loop strives to make consumer products more sustainable and to help better the environment, as well as eliminate waste. However, Loop is going against their own beliefs if they continue to use gas vehicles and they would be contributing to the ongoing problem caused by the pollution of gas vehicles. See, on average, a typical vehicle emits about five metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. Not only driving the gas vehicles causes greenhouse gases, but so does producing and distributing the gas that is used in the vehicles. Other than carbon dioxide, automobiles produce things like methane and many other greenhouse gases. Per gallon of gas, there is about 8,881 grams of carbon dioxide created, or about 404 grams per mile. Doing some further research, um, some studies have found that the gas vehicle's emission surpasses the electric vehicle's well-to-wheel emission in just six to 18 months of operation. Carbon dioxide causes climate change by trapping heat. The excess carbon dioxide can also cause changes in plant growth, but CO2 is not only harmful for the environment, but it's also harmful to us. We can get respiratory diseases from all the air pollution, which can, cause, can, which can lead to death. If flu were to switch into electric vehicles or hybrid cars, they would decrease a lot of the carbon dioxide that is emitted into the air. See, electric vehicles only emit harmful pollutants when, the, when their engines are made, but they're still made of environmentally friendly materials. However, when gas vehicles are made, they're emitting harmful pollutants into the air, but also as soon as the engine of a gas vehicle is turned on, immediately harmful pollutants are being emitted into the environment. See, electric and hybrid vehicles may be more expensive, but in the long run, Loop would be saving a lot more money on gas, especially nowadays with the gas prices being so high, almost double what they used to be. An electric vehicle would help maintain a neutral carbon footprint indefinitely while gas vehicles continue to produce harmful pollutants. Loop will be practicing what they preach by switching to electric vehicles to drive to the drop-off locations. It is unethical of Loop to continue to use vehicles that emit so much carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants into the air when they can make a change by switching to the type of vehicle that they use. So these propose, oh, I'm sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> no, I was just gonna, I say now Dylan will talk, but go ahead, go ahead. Great, thanks, Cynthia. Um, so our proposed solutions are sort of to get back at Loop's main goal, which is reducing the amount of single use plastic that's in our world. Um, as Rebecca had stated earlier, it's a massive industry, a billion dollar industry that's slated to only grow in the, in the coming years. So Loop's mission to uh, stop this is by implementing a circular economy. So our current economic cycle has a lot of uh, taking in resources, using them, and then producing a lot of waste that cannot be reused. But with a circular economy, what they wanna do is reuse a lot of those resources so that it can keep contributing to our economy so we don't pull as many resources out of the environment, nor do we contribute uh, more waste. And the way they wanna do that is again uh, by uh, creating sustainable packaging in the form of uh, aluminum, uh, reusable packaging. Uh, this is a way that they can, again, contribute to the circular economy, not create as many waste uh, that is currently uh, in our system. And the way they want to do this is by uh, approaching uh, popular brands uh, that want to help the environment, giving them a quick and easy solution to doing so and uh, giving them a better brand image uh, in terms of their environmental goals that they wish they wish to pursue. Uh, and they also want to approach retailers uh, that want to sell some of these products so that their environmental image uh, can increase as well. Uh, again, this is meant to make uh, the businesses more sustainable. A lot more companies nowadays are having more uh, sustainable environmental goals that they wish to pursue, and Loop is offering them a quick and easy way to do so. Uh, one of their biggest partnerships is with uh, Kroger, uh, in which they have 25 
stations in uh, some of Kroger's stores. And uh, Kroger stated this saying, uh, their commitment to embrace innovation on our path to zero hunger and zero waste aligns perfectly with Loop's mission to create a convenient circular packaging solution for our consumers. Now, this should be taken as an example of what companies uh, wish to do and will want to do in the future is contribute to this circular economy. Um, it's in many, again, as I said, it's in many of their missions and values and Loop offers them an easy way to uh, uh, achieve those uh, environmental goals. And it's been seen, the reason they do this is because a lot of consumers want this as well. Uh, a survey by Forbes found that 68% of highly empowered consumers plan to increase their efforts to find brands to help the environment. So as we can see, it's a common economic trend now. Consumers want this. It's pressuring businesses to do this. And Loop's mission uh, in curbing the amount of single-use plastics that we use is being achieved by acting as this catalyst for a lot of businesses to be able to pursue these uh, environmental goals and thus can help curb the use of uh, single-use plastics. And uh, I think that uh, just about wraps it up. Thank you for your time. Thank you, U22 Reloop. That was very engaging. I do appreciate uh, your time in both the 10 minute and the 90 second presentations. Um, obviously, as I said before, there's no Q&A, but I will mention that this issue is dear to my heart. I'm actually in the market at this very moment for an electric vehicle. And I've already purchased two in my life, but I won't get into the details. So they, they weren't very good ones. So I'm hoping the third is a good, good match. But um, well done. And at this point, I will turn it back over to our tech experts and uh, navigates, navigator supporters. Um, but thank you again for the opportunity to serve as your judge today. Some notes I was taking uh, throughout the, the way. So um, again, you know, it's clear you did your homework. It's clear that you've researched this very well. I think sometimes the challenge can be finding that right vessel to communicate. The messaging is so important, particularly when you do not have the visual aid of a slide deck, right? Um, because that, that is always uh, front and center when we're giving presentations, especially, especially in a virtual world. Um, but it is an art to be able to communicate and paint a picture with your words. So I think that the more experience you have doing that, the better you'll get. In this particular scenario, I would have encouraged you to maybe set the table, tell a story, to kind of whet the appetite of the audience so you know the product, and we understand that, that there's a, a need, an imminent need, uh, as the board of directors to pivot in a new direction. Um, you did do some of this, but I think you can almost role play and say, hey, you know, in this scenario, John would have really benefited from looking to a product that was not available because your company did not put it out there. Something like that. You can be creative and, and debate about the particulars and how that would look. But that adds a human element. It also captures the audience's attention and it makes the rest of the presentation um, just kind of flow naturally. But again, a lot of really good facts. Uh, it's clear you did your homework and that was impressive. Just, I would say, work on the messaging and uh, you'd be good to go.